الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستهديه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فهو المهتد ومن يضلل فلن تجد له وليا مرشدا واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله بلغ الرساله بل امانه نصح الامه كشف الغمه وجاهد في الله حق جهاده وتركنا على المحجه البيضاء ليلها كنهارها لا يزيغ عنها الا هالك فصلوات الله وسلامه عليه وعلى اله واصحابه ومن سار على نهجهم واقتدى بسنته وهديه الى يوم الدين ما بعد ما دي ريسبكتد برادرز اند سيسترز السلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته الله سبحانه وتعالى منشن ان هيز بوك لقد كان لكم في رسول الله اسوه حسنه لمن كان يرجو الله واليوم الاخر وذكر الله كثيرا الله سبحانه وتعالى منشن ان هيز بوك انديد ان ذا ماسنجر اوف الله you have an excellent, excellent example for whoever has hope in Allah and the last day and remember Allah often. So as you see from this ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is ordering us to follow the footsteps and the example of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa And that's one of the reasons why I had a series over here called Immigration and Integration to follow the footsteps of Prophet Muhammad وسلم, and to see his example in how he dealt with his immigration and to do that in our life. And as we conclude our series of khutbah, the immigration and integration, al-hijra wal indimaj, a series that took us two years, two years to cover in this blessed masjid, around 23 khutbah. And by the way, yani you can access, you can access the entire series on Ad-Dar YouTube channel to review or catch up on any missed khutbah. Alhamdulillah, throughout this series, we explored the most critical strategic work, strategic work of our beloved Prophet Muhammad وسلم, and his companions over the course of 10 years in the Medina. The work in building the identity of the Muslim community. The work in da'wah, in integrating and reforming all aspects of life such as the moral, social, educational, political, economic, health, environmental, etc. We also examined how Prophet Muhammad وسلم, interacted with all the different groups of the Medina society, Muslims and non-Muslims, while he balanced the preservation of Islamic identity, al-hifaz ala al-hawiyya al-islamiyya, and citizenship, wal-muwatana. You may already know that 
I used to end each khutbah from that series with lessons learned and suggested the projects related to the khutbah topic and the type of reform that we cover at that time. Today, inshallah, in this khutbah and the next few khutbah, which will wrap up the whole series, inshallah ta'ala, I will share with you lessons that I learned from the entire series, from the entire series of immigration and integration. I will share with you some strategic lessons, some strategic lessons that are unfortunately missing and at the same time crucial to be included in our future blueprint. A blueprint for da'wah, a blueprint for reforming, a blueprint to build a distinctive Muslim community identity and contributing efficiently in building our country, Canada. In today's khutbah, inshallah, I will cover two strategic lessons. The first one that I learned from that series is that addressing society major issues is part of da'wah. Addressing society major issues is part of da'wah. يعني معالجة القضايا الكبرى للمجتمع هي جزء لا يتجزأ من الدعوة. Because sometimes we have a misconception that the da'wah is only to call for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we forgot the other aspects of the da'wah which is part of it is calling from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I notice that part of the da'wah, part of the da'wah that the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he started to practice the minute that he immigrated to Medina where the freedom ceiling was high, part of his da'wah was solving the major issues that the Medina society had. Exactly like the previous prophets, all the previous prophets, if you scan the Quran, you will find that all of them, they came with the da'wah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and at the same time, they are solving a major issue of their community and their society. The previous Yani exactly like the other prophets, but the only difference with the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that his, yani, he is more comprehensive. He was doing that type of, you know, correction on a more comprehensive scale comparing to the other prophets. In the previous prophets, as they were mentioned in the Quran, part of their da'wah was solving a major issue. Their people they suffered from. For example, Lut Alayhi Salam. Lut Alayhi Salam. Part of his da'wah was to reform a major social and moral issue that his people had, which is adultery. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in Surah Al-A'raf in Ayah 80 and 81. Which means, and remember when Lut scolded the men of his people saying, do you commit a shameful deed that no man, no man has ever done before? You lust after men instead of women? You are certainly transgressors. So as you see over here, part of Lut Da'wah is to call the people to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and simultaneously, simultaneously, which is at the same time, address a major social and moral issue among the people, among his people, which is adultery. And this is part of the Da'wah. This is not something separate from the da'wah. Shu'aib alayhi salam. Part of his da'wah was to reform a major economic and moral issue that his people had, which is cheating in trades. Cheating in trades. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in Surah Tud. Wa ila madyana akhahum shu'aiba. Qala ya qawmi abudullah. Ma lakum min ilahan ghayru. Wa la tanqusul mikyara bin mizan. Look in parallel. وَلَا تَنْقُصُ الْمِكَارَ وَالْمِزَانِ إِنِّي أَرَاكُمْ بِخَيْرٍ وَإِنِّي أَخَافُ عَلَيْكُمْ عَذَابَ يَوْمُ مُحِيطٍ Which means, and to the people of Madian, we sent their brother, Shu'ayb. He said, look what he said, O my people, worship Allah, you have no God other than Him, and, and, so simultaneously, and do not give short measure and wait. I do see you in prosperity now, but I truly fear you the torment of an overwhelming day. So once again, Shu'aib alayhi salam, part of his da'wah to call the people to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and simultaneously address 
a major economic and moral issue that his people they used to do, which is cheating in trades, which is basically referred to it as measures and scales. Musa alayhi salam, part of his da'wah was to remove a major, uh, a major oppression and slavery issue that Fir'aun used to practice on Bani Israel. And the Quran talked about that in many areas and many surahs. And so on. You will see that trend in all the Prophet's stories in the Quran. You will see that trend in all the Prophet's stories in the Quran. Where part of their da'wah was to solve a major issue. As our Prophet Muhammad وسلم, is the final messenger from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And his message is Islam, which is considered the final and the most comprehensive, most comprehensive message from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Part of his da'wah was to reform multiple major issues. Not one, but multiple major issues in all aspects of life. We saw that clearly in the series of khutbah, immigration and integration where he presented an ama amazing practical solutions and reforms to Muslim and to non-Muslims in the Medina. These solutions, you give it to the Muslims and to the non-Muslims, not only da'wah to the Muslims. And he gave that in social, economic, educational, political, health, environmental, media, and family. These solutions were the practical part of da'wah. I call it the practical part of da'wah. That Muslim and non-Muslim in the Medina, they wanted to see, to see you in practicing Islam. This is how they see you practicing in Islam. They wanted to see da'wah actions, not just hear da'wah words. They want to see da'wah actions, not to hear, not just to hear da'wah words. Because actions are much louder than the words. Actions are much louder than the words. Recently, after October 7th, it's a proof, and we saw how actions are much louder than the words. We saw how actions, the patience, the resilience of, and the beautiful relations, relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that displayed by the people of Gaza have positively impacted the non-Muslims worldwide. Even from thousands of miles away, across the oceans, many have been able to see and interact positively, positively with them. As a result, some have started even to read the Quran and embrace Islam. Thousands of people, they had that. And they were affected by that across the ocean and thousands of, few, thousands of miles away. Because the actions are much louder than words. And unfortunately, subhanAllah, and I say that sad, sadly over here, that we have failed to show the same level of positivity and interaction in da'wah with our neighbors, colleagues from a zero distance. From a zero distance. That raised for us a lot of questions that we have to review our approach and our da'wah and how we approach this da'wah over here in Canada. Once again, people, they wanted to see da'wah actions and not just to hear da'wah words. <laughs> Prophet Muhammad وسلم, the minute that he arrived to Medina, he started to work in a full speed and full capacity as if he is racing with the time, utilizing the high ceiling of freedom he executed, as I mentioned earlier, he executed 10 strategic projects or 10 strategic reforms. We covered in that series. All of them were the practical part of his tawa and essential in building a unique, positive Muslim community identity and solving, solving major issues that the Medina society have. And just to remind you, those 10 reforms or 10 projects, they were the masjid. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi he built the masjid, which is related to the worship. Then he did the brotherhood, which is a social reform. Then he did the Medina's market, built, established the Medina's market, which is part of the economic reform. Then the Medina's document, a political reform. Medina's media, media reform. The health reform. The environmental, the Medina refo environmental reform. The Medina educational reform ordering right and forbid the wrongdoing, which is part of the social reform. And finally, the family reform, or the family restructure, which is a social reform. So 10 strategic reforms were the practical part of his da'wah, 
the practical part of his da'wah. We're, the essential, we're essential in building a unique, positive Muslim community identity, and at the same time, solving major issues that the Medina society have. That brings me to the second lesson that I learned from that series, which is related to the Prophet ﷺ methodology in applying this, yani his da'wah and these reforms, how he applied these reforms. I noticed from the seerah, and I think you noticed that, that he ﷺ implemented these reforms comprehensively and simultaneously, not sequentially. He did not yani, execute only one thing at a time. He was executing all the 10 projects at the same time. That's important methodology. And that's important approach in the way that we do a reform. And that's how the Prophet ﷺ, he did it. What I mean by that? He initially, in the first few months, just the first few months of his arrival to the Medina, he laid the cornerstones, Hajar al Asas, the cornerstone for all the strategic reforms, all the 10 projects at the same time. He initiated phase one of each project from the 10 projects in the first few months of his arrival to the Medina. He began, just to remind you, he began to build the masjid the minute that he arrived to the Medina as a cornerstone to worship, as, as a cornerstone of worship identity. And within the masjid, if you recall, within the masjid, the education reform started because the education circles started in the masjid. And at the same time, the media reform started with the masjid, where the adhan and the member and the Friday khutbah started over there from day one. Then he established the brotherhood. So three projects started at the same time. Then he established the brotherhood as a cornerstone of social identity and reform, where he structured, restructured the society relations, especially the Muslim community. Then he established the Medina's market, which is a cornerstone of the economic identity and reform. Then he wrote the Medina's document, which is the Wathiqa of Medina. It's a cornerstone for political identity and reform. And initiated at the same time in the same document, he initiated the order what is right and forbid the wrongdoing. And he made it part of the social culture. And during that time, also, he started the family reform because Surah Al-Baqarah was revealing at that time. One of the first surah revealed on the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu in the first few days, Surah Al-Baqarah. And we mentioned before how this Surah Al-Baqarah was putting an initial outline and blueprint for the family restructure. And also in parallel, he started to solve and to do a health reform, a project to solve the Yathrib uh, fever. And at the same time, the environmental reform has been initiated by applying the environmental hygiene in solving the health crisis. He did all that, all those initial phases, which I call it phase one, for all those 10 projects within the first four to six months of his arrival. So this is a methodology. Later, he built at the top of these cornerstones. Every year he was going to a second phase, a third, and then up to, 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 to the 10 year. And he expanded their fields during the 10 years that he lived in the Medina. Then the Khulafa al-Rashidin, they completed that expansion and development of that magnificent community structure. That was his methodology, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, in building the Muslim community and its identity. He worked in parallel, not Syria. He worked in parallel, not Syria. He did not just focus on building the masajid and the schools. For a few years, as we do right now, nowadays, unfortunately. Then he moved after that to the brotherhood, and then he moved to the uh, economic solutions or the political solutions. He did not do that. That was not the way that the Prophet Sallallahu in his da'wah or even in building the Muslim community identity. All the cornerstones should be there in all phases of building the Muslim community identity. The same way that SubhanAllah you construct a multi-story building. If you want to construct any multi-story building, do you construct it as one pillar for 10 story? You need to put all the 10 pillars in every floor. This is how we build the buildings. We make one floor at a time where all the cornerstones and pillars are on each floor in all phases and all phases. 
This simultaneous parallel approach will help us to achieve two crucial points. The first thing, it will help the Muslim and the non-Muslim to see a complete image of our beautiful Islamic identity, all the dimension of our Islamic identity, whether it was economic, health, political aspect, they will see it in all the phases. They will see all those pillars when they look at our da'wah. And they can see it clearly in any phase of the building process. And not just to see a distorted one-dimensional image, just one or two pillars, thinking that that, that is Islam. Thinking that Islamic identity is only masajid or schools. And I believe our incomplete approach is one of the main reasons for that misconception that we have it in our kids, and also we deliver it to the non-Muslims. They misunderstand Islam. They see our practice in da'wah is totally away from what we are saying. And they don't see the full image of Islam. The second important point why we need to work in parallel is that these cornerstones are not isolated. They are fully connected and they support one another. And to execute any big project successfully, you need to utilize and to rely on a multiple cornerstones most of the time, like the walls and the ceiling in each floor. They don't need one pillar, they need all maybe the 10 pillars to put the ceiling. They need the multiple pillars and cornerstones to support. For example, if you want to make our Islamic schools to be fully or partially yani, funded by the government, I'm talking over here about major projects, like Islamic schools to make it funded fully or partially by the government. We need social, economic, media, education, and political power and influence. And, 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 and political power to influence the decisions and to succeed. That's what I mean by a strategic projects. You cannot apply it or do it without having all these pillars. The absence of these pillars, it will, it will make us fail to, to execute such a, such a, a strategic project. I'm not talking about making rally. Rally is not a strategic project. I'm talking about strategic projects. We need to synchronize, to connect, and to direct all these pillars to support that strategic project. That could be one of the core reasons why we could not achieve big projects successfully due to the lack of multiple cornerstones and pillars to support. That is why we need to readjust our methodology in building the Muslim community identity and to follow the Prophet ﷺ approach and his sunnah, his minhaj, to work in parallel and not serial, and to work comprehensive. Part, this is part of our Prophet ﷺ sunnah and his approach. Asallallahu ta'ala ni ufaqihna fi dinina, wa jalna mimma yuhyuna sunnah talabihina sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, fi jami qulubi muslimin ala ta'atih wa nusrati dinah. ومن من مرجعهم في كل أمورهم كتاب الله وسنة رسوله قول قولي هذا واستغفر الله استغفروه أنه هو الغفور الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا ما بعد my dear respected brothers and sisters once again the two lessons that we learn over here that Tackling the major issues of the community is part of the da'wah. And we have to tackle it comprehensively and in parallel, simultaneously. That's the way and the method of Prophet ﷺ that I learned from his seerah and how he built the Muslim community identity. Inshallah, in the coming two final khutbah of that series where I will wrap everything, inshallah, I will share with you another two strategic levers and lessons that I learned from the Prophet immigration and I found essential in building the Muslim community identity and we lack of it. One of them is the Ummah Fiqh and the second one is the Citizenship Fiqh. Fiqh al-Ummah or Fiqh al And we have a major issues with that. Inna Allah wa malaykatahu salluun ala nabi ya ayuhal ladheena amanu sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima Allahumma salli wa sallim wa barik ala nabiina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallim taslima kathira اللهم اجعل اجتماعنا هذا اجتماعا مرحوما واجعل تفرقنا من بعده تفرقا معصوما ولا تجعل فينا ولا من بيننا شقيا ولا محروما اللهم اهدنا لخير الاعمال والاقوال فانه لا يهدي لخيرها الا انت 
اللهم اجعل خير اعمالنا واخرها وخير اعمالنا خواتمها وخير ايامنا يوم ان نلقاك اللهم من اراد بالاسلام والمسلمين خيرا فوفقه لكل خير ومن اراد بالاسلام والمسلمين شرا فخذوا اخذ عزيز مقتدر فانهم لا يعجزوك اللهم انصر اخواننا في فلسطين اللهم انصر اخواننا في فلسطين اللهم انصر اخواننا في في فلسطين اللهم تقبل شهداءهم واشف جرحاهم واطلق اسرهم اللهم نسالك من الخير كله عاجل واجل ما علمنا من وما لم نعلم ونعوذ بك من الشر كله عاجل واجل ما علمنا من وما لم نعلم اللهم نسالك من خير ما سالك منه نبيك وحبيبك محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم ونعوذ بك من شر ما استعلك منه نبيك وحبيبك محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم ان الله يامر بالعدل والاحسان وايتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعيدكم لعلكم تذكرون فاذكروا الله العظيم يذكركم واشكروا على نعمه يزدكم ولا ذكر الله اكبر والله يعلم التصاوير واقم الصلاه Oh, that's